for BBA. Control shift enter or a macro wave. Well, there's my G on the CSE. Billy J getting down with the VBA. Oh my, it's a dual and XL time. Stand by, it's a dual and XL time. Mama, it's dual and XL time. Hey, welcome back. It's time for another Dueling Excel podcast. I'm Bill Jellen from Mr. Excel. I'll be joined by Mike Gervin from Excel is Fun. This is our episode 186. Yes, if any digits in the cell. Today's question sent in by Jen has 13,000 rows of data. Needs to look through a cell. If any character is a digit, mark it as yes. Otherwise, no. All right. Well, Mike, I hope that you have some awesome way to do this because I do not. I am going to use flash fill and in flash fill I'm just going to uh, give it a pattern here with some letters and numbers I'm going to make sure that I include all of the possible numbers just so it understands what I'm doing and zero like that so there's the original data and then I'm going to have flash fill fix it for me and in the fixed version we're going to get rid of all the digits so look and see if there's a digit. If there is, get rid of it like that. And then press Control E to flash fill. And what we should have is now all of just the letters, just the letters. And then the question is, did it change? So equal if this is equal to what we were looking for, then that means that there were no changes, no digits, and we're going to say no. Otherwise, yes, like that. And double click and copy that down. All right, and then anything with a no has no digits there. We can get rid of our original row. And uh, once we copy this, Control C, Alt ESV, and we can get rid of the flash fill. All right, Mike, let's see what you have. Wow, Mr. Excel, that has to be the most amazing, creative, unique use of flash fill I think I've ever seen. You invented a text, took out the actual numbers, control E, and it instantly extracted all of the numbers and delivered a new text string without the numbers. And then you did your if. Absolutely beautiful. All right, I'm going to come over to this sheet right here. And I'm going to use the substitute function. Now, substitute, I'm going to tell it to look at that text right there, comma. And the old text I want to find and remove, well, they're all the digits. So I'm going to create an array constant, curly bracket, 1, comma, 2, comma, 3, comma, 4, comma, 5, all of the digits and curly bracket. Now, that's an array constant, and it's sitting in old text because I'm not putting a single item there, but instead I'm putting a bunch of items. This is a function argument array operation. There are 10 different items here, which will instruct substitute to, to deliver 10 separate items. All right, comma. And if it finds one of those items, what do I want? Double quote, double quote. That will tell the function to put nothing there. Close parentheses. Now, my cursor's at the end when I hit the F9 key. Sure enough, because there's only a 0, all of these are exactly equal except for the last one. For the last one, the substitute found the 0 and put nothing in its place. Now, Control-Z, Control-Enter, and I'm going to copy it down right to here. F2 and F9. So if we go to the 6, there's the 5 version. It removed the 5 there. It removed the 6 there. And it removed the 8 there. So there will be 1, 2, 3 different items that are different. Only when all the items are exactly equal to the original item will it tell us there are no digits. Escape. I'm going to come back up to the top. It sounds like F2, this is an AND logical test. AND function, I want to check whether every single one of those items in that resultant array is equal to the original item. When they're all true, 
then it will tell me there are no numbers in that text string. Close parentheses, Control Enter. I get a false because one of them internally is missing that 0. I'm going to copy this down here. This one, of course, will get a true. Same with these because all of the internally generated items, if I F2 right here, all of these F9 are exactly equal to the original. Escape. Now I come up to the top. By the way, I didn't have to use Control Shift Enter because when you use this array constant in your array formula, then you don't have to use Control Shift Enter. All right, I'm going to come to the beginning. That's my logical test. If all of those come out to be true, comma, value if true, and double quotes, no, and double quote, comma, otherwise, please put a yes. And double quote, close parentheses, Control Enter. Double click, and then I'm going to have to double click this one and send it down. All right, that was a little fun with the substitute, an array constant, an and logical test, and the if. But I tell you what, I still cannot believe that flash fill, how you used it to, in essence, extract all of the numbers from that. All right, I'm going to throw it back to you, Mr. Excel. Well, that formula with substitute and the array constant and and, that is freaking amazing. I had to use flash fill because I couldn't have figured this one out. Uh, that is brilliant. Now, I do have a third way. Let's take a look at that. Here's the news flash. Mr. Excel and I usually post videos about the same time, but I'm late posting today. I already watched his posted video. And many at YouTube have this awesome formula that actually is more efficient than the one I use. If I come up and F2, substitute array constant, that's basically equivalent in calculation time to the find, or I'm going to use search. But notice up here, we then had to do an array operation with an equal sign. And then we had to use the AND function. So by Eliminating this array operation right here, the formula can be more efficient. Now, here's what many did. Many used the find, but notice when I type the letter F, I have to type in I, N to get to find. So find and search are similar, except for find is case sensitive and search is not case sensitive. Since we're using digits, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, etc. We don't need to worry about case. So watch this. Equals S. And when you type S, search is the first function. So I usually use search because I have to type two fewer characters when case doesn't matter. Tab. And here's the array constant. 1, 2, 3, all the way to 0. And curly bracket. That's the text that search is going to try to find, comma, within that text right there. Now, remember, when you put multiple items into any function's argument, you're telling the function to do a function argument array operation. Search will spit out one answer for each of the items we put in there. And what does search do? Well, if search searches for 0, it will count on its fingers, one, two, three, four. It will report the position in the text string that it finds that particular digit. All of these other ones, since those digits aren't in this text string, will result in an error. I'm going to close parentheses at the end and F9. That is beautiful, because now we will always have an array that will deliver either an error or a number. Control Z, then many use the count function. And guess what? Tab count counts how many numbers are in a particular either range or, in our case, resultant array. And it won't be bothered by those errors. Close parentheses, Control Enter. We're not done yet, but double click and send it down. That little formula element right there is beautiful, because what does it do? It counts exactly how many digits it found in the larger text string. That formula right there can be used in many other situations. But we're not done, of course, because we need yes or no, F2. So we simply 
use the if function, tab. We also want to remember that for the logical test, we don't need true and false, because that logical test will interpret any non-zero number as true and zero as false. So there's our patterns of trues and falses. Come to the end, comma, and the value if true, that means it found the digits. And double quotes, yes, and double quote, comma, the value if false, and double quotes, no. Close parentheses, control, enter, double click and send it down. That is absolutely beautiful. All right, now we still have to see the VBA solution, which might be the best of all. You know, here's the way that I would really solve this, uh, just a little bit of VBA. So I do Alt F11 to switch over to VBA, insert a module, and then type this code. That we're going to create a new function called has numbers, and we're going to pass it a cell value. Uh, and we're going to start out uh, with the word alpha. We look at every single character, and if that code, if the ASCII code, of that character is between 48 to 57, then we say that it's numbers, exit function, uh, and just keep going, right? So it looks until it finds a digit. When it does, uh, it returns has numbers. So here, we're going to say equal has numbers, point to that cell, and double click to copy that down. Anytime it sees a digit over there, we'll get the numbers, alpha, easy to sort them out. All right, uh, quick episode recap. The goal, check the column to see if there are any digits in the uh, character code, or the code in the uh, in the cell. I use flash fill to remove the digits, and then the length function to see if it changed or not. Mike had a brilliant formula, substitute function with an array constant. Uh, you don't need control shift enter, it'll remove one digit at a time, and then use the and function to look at all 10 results to see if each one is equal to the original item. Brilliant way to go. And then um, I fall back, use a VBA function to check for digits. Well, hey, I want to thank everyone for stopping by. We'll see you next time for another netcast from Mr. Excel and Excel is fun. It's doing Excel time.